Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're working on a motorcycle and you don't have any spark. Well, in 40 years of fooling with these things, these early bikes with points, there's a couple of very common problems. Today, we're gonna to take a look at a common problem that I just bumped into on this bike. I'm gonna show you how to save yourself a little time in aggravation, and I'm gonna give you a really high level explanation of how points work and show you how to install them. So let's get going. All right, guys, so to get started, here's the engine I recently removed from my 1974 Honda ATC 70. In fact, if you watch the video I posted earlier today, you can see the process of evaluating that bike and removing the engine. And I checked it for spark before I took it apart and had nothing. So here on the bench, very, very simple. You've got one wire, the black wire that comes off of the ignition coil that actually goes to the primary coil. I've got that grounded to the engine with a jumper clip. That's really all you need. The, the kill switch is out of the picture. And configured like this, if everything is set up correctly, there's my spark plug laying against the engine. And if we're in good shape, it should fire. So it doesn't, but I'm gonna show you that. And I'm gonna do that by taking a drill with a 17 millimeter socket, and I'm gonna spin the engine in the counterclockwise direction that it goes. I'll just show you this right now. And then we'll take a look at the plug. And we got nothing. So no spark, let's get under that flywheel and see what's going on. All right, so with the flywheel off, couple of things to notice. These are your two coils. One is for lighting, one is for the actual ignition. On this bike, there is no lighting. That would be the green and the yellow wires that just dead end at this connector. The black wire coming off of here is actual hot from the ignition coil. This is the condenser. In today's world, it would be called, called a capacitor. It is important to have this in the circuit. It will prevent arcing across the points when the points open and close. And basically what goes on, flywheel spins around, it generates electromagnetic energy in these coils. When the points open, that magnetic field collapses, shoots that voltage out to your ignition coil, fires the spark plug. So high level, that's all there is to it. The number one most common problem on an old bike like this is that these points would be pitted and actually not making a connection, but that's not what the problem is here. If you take a close look at this, you can probably see but I'm gonna point out to you exactly what's wrong. All right, guys, so here's the magic of this video. Here's a brand new set of points. All these things are is a switch. This fl follows the flywheel around, and at some point it opens up, opening the switch, and closes, closes the switch. That's all there is to it. The body of the points is meant to be grounded, and then this circuit here is separate from that and should not be grounded. On a bike that has been fooled with, the other very common problem you can see demonstrated here, which is the lead that actually goes out to the ignition coil is on the wrong side of this connector when you look at it. So basically a set of points has these two insulators and that's to insulate the connector that goes to that output wire from the rest of the body of the points. This piece right here is grounded to the chassis. So when you look at this bike, and if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that the wire is connected directly to the point frame. It is grounded all the time. Opening and closing the points isn't going to do anything. So I'm gonna replace those points with these new ones just because these are worn. But as a quick little test, we're gonna move this to the other side of the insulator and see if that makes any difference in terms of having the points fire. And it might be as simple as that. All right, and you can see here, I've moved that connector to the other side of the insulator. I'm gonna put the flywheel back on, even though I'm gonna change these points, I'm gonna put the flywheel back on and see what happens. All right, so after putting the flywheel back on, I've got a very weak and intermittent spark right now. So rather than fool with these old points, I'm gonna take them out, I'm gonna put the new ones in there, and likely the problem will be solved. 
All right, so with a cleaned brand new set of points, it's easier to see, make sure this is on the opposite side of the insulator, right? You don't want it connected directly to ground. Otherwise, when these things open, it's never going to work. And so you guys can see, here's the ones that came out of there. They're old, they're rusty. The contacts aren't too, too bad, but uh, this thing has definitely seen better days. So let's pop the flywheel on there and see what we've got now. All right, and so with the new points in there, the point gap adjusted only by eye. Keep your eye on the spark plug. Let's turn this thing over. And we've got really good spark. And just because after doing all of that work, you gotta know. A little starting fluid. Choke on, cover the carburetor. All right, guys, so what have we learned today? Well, aside from my lesson on points, we learned that a 50-year-old ATC 70 engine that has so little compression that I can easily turn it over by hand and has never been opened up from what I can tell in terms of the, the top end of this will still run, which is insanity. But getting back to points, three things to know. Number one, it's just a switch. It opens and closes. It's got to open at the right time. I'm not going to teach you how to set your point timing today, but it's easy. Opens and closes. When it opens, it allows that magnetic field to collapse, fire the spark plug. In order to open and close, number one, the actual contacts, right? When you open it up, those two little pads in there, they have to be clean. If they get dirty, then the switch can never close and it won't work. And then if you connect the wire on the wrong side of that insulator, that's connecting it directly to ground, then in that case, even when those points are open, that circuit is still closed and that will never work either. So here's a bike I'm sure somebody spent a lot of time fooling around with. You know, number one, those points were old and junky. I don't know at what point they were fooling around with it, but they should have been replaced. And then they had it wired the wrong way did basically nothing to this and it'll run. So we're gonna rebuild it. We're gonna get the rest of that trike apart. Hopefully this was valuable guys. Subscribe if it was and you're not subscribed already. Give me a like or leave me a comment. I always enjoy your comments and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.